This is Mario Murillo, and this is Firepower. I'm going to tell you something. We have never had a show filled with more faith and hope than the one you're about to watch. We have with us a very special guest, and to introduce him, I'm going to throw it to my co-host here, Todd Coconado. Todd? Thanks, Mario. We're here at NRB, and I got to tell you, we have an amazing guest who has a story oh that you need to hear. <laughs> It's a testimony, uh, not only in the marketplace, but this man is on fire for God. He's actually just written a book called Ignite Your Life. And Barry McGuire, we want to welcome you to the Thank show. Thank you. Greatly honored to be here. I'm doing interviews, you know, all day long every day, but I finally made it. I mean, I just need to come here for you. That's, I can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys rock. And, of course, we have a lot of history. Yes, we, we do, my friend. go back to the friend. 70s, so I yes, mean, we've a lot of history. So we've had and a lot we of fun we got a lot together. to talk about, so we're going to jump right into it. We live in a time where I think believers are living way below their oh, potential. Geez. It's, it's they are, tragic. They, they, at this we, moment in time, yes. can you believe it? At this moment, right. when we have all this opportunity, we're sitting here like complaining about everything, just like the world is, and cowering. You know, 80%, over 80% of Christians are living in fear. Mm. They're living in fear. Those are think hard statistics. That. I mean, when I go out and speak, they tell me what they're, how they're living in fear. I like, are you kidding me? You know, what happens if you're living in fear, of course? You're not living in faith. Right. Without faith, you can't please God. Without faith, you can't share your faith. No. I think I think Satan has sterilized the church with fear. Yes. Because he's got us right where he wants it. Only 1% of us are sharing our faith. 80%. 80% over 80% of the unchurched, that's most almost everybody around us, know the world's out of control. God right. has their right. attention now. Right. Thank right God for, for bad times, yeah. right? Uh, they want to believe. They're looking around. Is there? They're looking for somebody to tell them, and get this, they already, over 80% of them, already have a Christian in their life that they trust. Wow. We, we, could, we could ignite America in 30 days if we wanted to with revival. We could do that. Well, we're just sitting there, oh, and is, is Trump going to, if Trump doesn't get elected, we're not going to, you know, just stop it. Am I? We could have all those agendas. You can be, but, but God is God, and his yeah, plan yeah. is moving forward. We're running out of time. <laughs> Glory to God. Ooh, I feel the presence of the Lord on this set right yeah. now. You know, you just said a staggering number. Was it 1% that are sharing their 1%. Faith? You know, the statistics say 30, 35%. Wrong number. You go behind the numbers. You know, most people, even evangelicals, think now that sharing their faith is being a good person. But, Barry, isn't that the Great Commission? Isn't that what the Lord told us to yeah. do? They think if I'm being a good person, everybody likes me. I'm a shining light. And, and it's pride. And we've taken that on. In fact, do you know that most evan I don't know what evangelicals are anymore. Most evangelicals believe you can earn your way to heaven. Yeah. Most evangelicals believe there's more than one way to heaven. That's people that are identifying themselves as Christians, as evangelicals. Wow. But they don't know the Bible. No, they I mean, don't. It's a different world now. It's a so different world. So we have to go world. back to day one. How do we take the, this message of this yeah. brilliant evangelist and take it to the street? That's what I'm, I'm well, all in for. <laughs> you know, when you talk about soul winning, I tell you, uh, this mural behind us from our tent, this is, you were in our crusade in Los Angeles. Yeah, I, where am I? I'm looking yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. it's true that the church doesn't think the world wants to be saved, but by the thousands they come to be saved. I have a, a list of MFEs. You know what FAQs are? Most frequently asked questions, right? Right, right. right. I have MFEs, most frequent excuses for not sharing your faith. <laughs> And there's about 12 of them. I hear them over and over and over. I'm not gifted. You know, mm. I haven't studied. I don't have any. What if I get asked the tough questions? They'll think of them. Oh, stop it. You know, and, and really, this, the thought that you have to prepare. I'm not prepared. You don't yes. have to be prepared. God has all you. We have God. Right. So, but Jesus, if you look at the scriptures, and I've been doing this for 50 years. Yes, sir. The one that changed me 50 years ago after trying to do it all right and getting lost in point two and point three and all this stuff. He said, uh, they'll know you're my disciple uh, by your love. Yes. Well, I can love on people. So I started, according to scripture, just loving on people. And I found out rather than pushing God down their throat, if I love, everybody's starving for love. They're starving yes. for love. And they, they can't imagine God loving them after all they've done. You tell somebody, you know, God loves you. I had one guy, he said, no, no, he's a taxi driver. No. I said, yes, he loves you. No. I said, you know, actually, it gets better. Do you know he loves you as much as he's ever loved anybody ever? That's right. He stopped. Can't think of it. 
I said, it gets even better. Do you know he loves you as much as he loves his own son, Jesus Christ? That's how much God loves you. He didn't know what to say. He got to the desk. It was just a short taxi ride. I got out. He put down his window for me to pay him. I, oh, I first off said, I'll give you a big tip. It's a short ride. I don't want a tip. <laughs> oh, you don't want a tip? Sir? No, I'm a bad person. I don't deserve a tip. I mean, he had to talk about it. Low self-image. I mean, he may be ready to kill himself. I don't know. And all of a sudden, here I am in his car telling me God loves him. And now he, he doesn't even know what to do, you know? Yes. And so he rolled down the window. I said, sir, God put me in your car just now because he urgently wants you to know he loves you. And he wants you to spend eternity with him. God bless you. And I gave him a really big tip, walked away. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when I had those experiences, I did that one particularly. I look up and I see Jesus smiling at me. Mm. I see him smiling at me. Yeah. You know, we can grieve him, and we often do. Yeah. But when we know we're in the right place at the right time, we said the right words, he spoke through us, we're right there. Yes. He's happy with me. I look up, it's like he's saying to me, way to go, Bear. I set that up and you pulled it off. And it's the joy of the Lord that's our strength. It's not my joy. No. Right. It's his joy. Yes. When I give him joy, <laughs> I walk him to, thank you, Jesus. Who's next? <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I really believe that your life story is one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard. Well, I, because you're the car guy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done it through the hard knocks. You know, we lost a, a daughter at 49 years of oh. age. I was dying in the IC unit, and they gave up on me. Karen, I, everybody was, David Wilkinson flew from the East Coast to be with me. Wow. I and mean, we had people crying and giving condolences. Karen, <laughs> never lost our joy. Never lost wow. our joy. Uh, I had a joint venture partner that uh, took over my board. He had three board members. I had three board members. We had an, an independent, quote-unquote independent. He, I found out too late, he always buys off the independent that he has control of the board. So I find out the next morning, he's going to throw me out of my 100-year-old family business. My grandfather started in 1901. Mm. I mean, I'm 65 years old. It's over. My income's over. My reputation, my testimony, it's over. Darkest moment of my life it didn't faze me at all because of what we're talking about here. I'll go into it. But yes. So I, that night, honestly, he's hearing my voice right now. I prayed this short prayer. I said, God, I ask you for nothing. Because of two things. One, you know I live for your purpose. His purpose is to seek and save the lost. We know that. Romans 8, 28 says, when you love me and live for my, he means it. I really will make everything work for good, but we yes. don't preach that whole message. No. We just say, well, if you love me. No. And then people say his purpose is. That's not, not purposes. When you live for my purpose, he has one purpose, the redemption of mankind, yes. to seek and save the lost. So when we live every day, every moment to seek and save the lost, you're living for his purpose. So I just said, you know, I live for your purpose and I know you honor your word. And you say, when I do that, you make it good. I'm fine. I went to sleep immediately. I slept all night. I never woke up. Didn't toss and turn. Woke up fresh the next morning for the, the most disastrous moment of my life. And I went to my office, uh, my attorney's office, where it was a conference call, right. a, a, a conference call, a con board meeting. And within eight minutes, God turned that thing all around by something he had ha made happen five years earlier. And my, it, they were so disrespectful to me, they thought I was gone. And all of a sudden, it turned around them. And all of a sudden, it's GD this and F this. And they're, they're totally losing it. They're so <laughs> wow. I break out laughing. I say, God, you're amazing. I was toast. But I trusted you. Yes. And I trust you because it's a firm foundation. If we live for God's prayers, folks, he wants us to share our faith, so we have faith. That's right. They're two sides of the same coin. And when you when you do this, you share your faith, you live in the promise of Romans 8, 28 to make everything work together. That's the end of fear. That's the end of fear. It's gone. That's right. And I've lived that way for 50 years. It's, it's, it's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> In your moment of deepest trial, yeah. the Lord's joy was still with you. It never left you. Never the joy lose the Lord your joy. Your never lose your joy. Uh, Back when we were first preach. married, when we were at Santa Ana First Assembly, <laughs> yes, uh, young kids, uh, we realized we're giving sacrificially, we're doing everything, working with Doug Peterson's volunteering for this, but we had no joy. And we started praying for joy, joy. God, give us joy. We, uh, we can't be having more fun. We're just dry. Yeah. And about three weeks later, the church, that church, Santa Ana First Assembly, had their 50th uh, anniversary celebration, okay? Now, put in perspective, they just had their 100th. 
and I was the speaker. Okay. okay. <laughs> but this is before. This is 1973. Okay. And uh, I, I sat next to the speaker. The speaker was Herb Ellingwood. He was the legal affairs secretary for Governor Reagan. Herb okay. Ellingwood. Yes. Wow. He, he was a face shared. I didn't know him. I sat beside him for the next hour. He never mentioned Reagan. He was. He would with tears eyes laughing and talking about all the fun he was having sharing. And I never knew that was. I never put joy. We, I thought sharing faith was trepidation, sweaty palms, <laughs> you know, dry throat. That was right. what I, that's my. And all of a sudden I realized joy. I get joy from sharing my faith. Yes, that's why it is the Great Commission. It's the lead link. I look at it. If you take that first, everything else falls into place. You know. If you don't share your faith, quite frankly, where the church is today, we stop reading our Bible. We're totally right. biblical illiterate. Yeah, yeah. We're not praying anymore. We're just right. going kind of go through the most. But when you share your faith, I mean, when you're preparing yeah. for a message, you're in the Word. You're digging and digging and digging. Right. You're praying. And for Bob that I met today and for Sarah and who are I going to meet tomorrow, you're in the game. Yes. And it all comes alive and there's purpose, purpose in everything. Even when your joint venture partners try to take you over or you have a flat tire. God, I have an appointment. Why? Why? Where are you? you now god when 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 things go wrong god's up to something and when you're living in the promise of eight romans eight twenty eight, right. you just know he's up to something so you watch and all of a sudden you find out the guy that's coming from triple a just lost his son the night before oh and he's in tears as he's doing what's going on and you get to minute if i hadn't had that flat tire all right a guy told me last week i was in the airport and i Four hour delay, and the lady at the party was so rude, and I was furious. Smoke was coming out my ear. And I walked away, and I heard your message from the book when bad things happen, God's in it. So I changed my editor. I said, Okay, God, what do you got in it? I walked into a restaurant. I got a four hour delay. I was led to the back of the restaurant. I sat right next to a lady who was in tears in, in total disarray without going into all the details. She said, it took me three hours for the breakthrough, sharing scripture and, and praying where they're explaining wow. it. And she finally had a breakthrough after three hours. If wow. I hadn't had that four hour delay, exactly, I never could have done that. Exactly. So for, for if you're a faith share, honestly, there's no bad days. The bad, in fact, the bad days, we look for them. We're, we're yeah. kind of, okay, what's God up to now? That's how we've lived our life. And, and, and folks, if you do that, Guess what? <laughs> It'll ignite your life. It really yeah. will. Just I was going to ask you how you chose the title for your book. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a car guy, right? Yeah. And so I, I, li I love cars. I've worked very hard for my business. We're now the number one selling car wax and huge market share. Oh, that's all God, not me. My, but for 50 years, it's been my pulpit. But, I, I, you know, I want to dig into the market yeah. share part. People need to Because that's this. amazing. How many... Car wax companies are there, right? Well, there's over 300 car wax companies in the in the retail space, over 300. 300. Yeah. So imagine yeah. you, you're in a business. You have 300 yeah. competitors. And we had nothing. We had no money. We we're doing 600 thousand dollars a year. We're tiny. I didn't know anything about retail. And I said, God, if you want me to go into retail, I heard His voice. I said, Okay, uh, this is here. I am. This trust you with my whole heart is easy because I don't have any understanding. Mm. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> and I've done that for 60 years. And he just, the miracle after, it, it's the so much fun. You have the anointing of the Lord. Well, uh, yeah, I would call whatever you want, but yes, we've sir. been totally blessed. And, you, and I tell it's tough running business today. Okay, so. All the regulations, of, the supply side, the, 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 right. the money issues, the employee. Right. Is, 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 we had double digit growth for 30 years. Can you imagine the pressures of growing a business? like that but god was always before me and he was i was i was toast so many times i was toast no fear no fear that they had no fear it really works <laughs> when god's working with you, there's no fear because he's going to make it god. good and so it's right. the end of work it is it, it, it's a little subhead right quick up again defeat fear with effortless faith we can't yeah. conjure up that kind of no faith. there's just no way no. i'm going to trust you god we always fail this is effortless because when you step into the promise of Romans 8, 28, it's just effortless. You don't have to worry. Your heart is fixed. So out of 300 companies, yeah. what is the market share for? Oh, ours? Yeah. Oh, we have a 38% market share. <laughs> <laughs> so what is turtle wax? We, we're going to mention the enemy. No, 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 no. I, I don't want to go there. But they're a little less, they, like they're, a lot less. But <laughs> They're quite a bit less. So think of that, folks. But uh, and, it's, it's such a ride, and it's such a privilege as a layman now. I mean, I've known you all these years. And, yes. I mean, to be able to 
I can't even imagine I would like to be Mara Rillo, okay? But as a businessman, being a recipient, and then our job is to take what you do from the pulpit and take it to the streets. Thank that's, you. That's our job. Yes, That's sir. our job. And we do it, it ignites our life. I mean, it's just amazing. I'm 82 years old. You know, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> and Karen's the same. We have perfect yeah. health. Yes. We yeah. travel every week somewhere. And it's just, it's just amazing. And now, if I could slide this in right quick, we announced here at NRB a Bible study, Ignite Your Life Bible study. Oh, wow. So for those that have been reading the book, it's an Amazon bestseller, but you could take it to another level. And it's a, it's, it's a digital free. It's on our website right now. Our website is igniteamerica.com. Igniteamerica.com. Wow. Igniteamerica.com. Yeah. Yeah. If you go there, you can download this right now. You got it. But it's nine less. I guarantee Anybody that goes through, it survives all night. It's, it's, it's pretty in-your-face message. It's, it's all scripture. By the time you get bit through that ninth chapter, uh, ninth yeah. lesson, you're, you're going to be on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being ignited in the studio right now. I don't, there's, a, there's a fire in here. Yeah, right there now. is a fire. Yeah. Now, we had a so. mutual friend, yes. David Wilkerson. Yes, sir. You know, our, our audience loves David. If we talk about David, they just get all excited. Oh. And, my, and, my, and, one of my closest friends for 40 years. Mm, 40 he and I years. found Times Square Church together. He, he and I and a realtor found that church at 51st and Broadway. The, Mount, the Mark, Mark Hellinger Church. Theater. Yeah. So, and you travel the world with David Works and you see Wait miracles minute, every here. day. You helped David get the Mark Hellinger Theater well, he on and I Broadway. Are, well, the, became, the Lord did it, but uh, yeah. we had a realtor take us around to theaters. And we walked into Mark Hallens, of course, it was, the, it was the flagship of the Broadway thing, gold, gilded ceilings and all that. Yes. And, and we looked around like, a, we we're right down by the, what we'd call the altar, but the, the yeah, stage. Yeah, Times Square. And we looked around and we walked out of 51st Street. We said, <laughs> we like farm boys, you know. Yeah, wow. really, right? Well, he prayed two or three hours a night. I know you do yes, that as did. well. Yes, he did. But he did that. Every, the next morning, he called me, guess what? What? God's given us, that's our church. I said, what? He told me. And God paid for it. He paid cash for it. It's Amazing. Incredible. What a bastion that is now, all the lives of, and, and around the world for that. Yeah, it's an place. amazing I church. Didn't, I didn't make it happen. I was with David Wilkerson when he walked in. I experienced it happening. Yeah. If I could ask you another question about David. Uh, I never knew a man that had more <laughs> compassion for lost souls than David. The way he would weep over people. And I was privileged to pick him up at the L.A. airport. Take him over to Melody Land. Oh wow. my goodness! In yeah. the very early days, the seventies, yeah. and he, and he was never or sixties, late sixties, yeah, and he was serious. Yeah, he was serious. Yes, he was. So, and uh, I, I'll never forget how many times I watched his love for lost <laughs> souls, and when he would give an altar call because he <laughs> influenced me on altar calls more than anyone else. My goodness! It was like God the Father was compelling one of his children to come home mm. yeah. the way David yeah. did it. And, and I saw young drug addicts paralyzed with conviction. Oh, yeah. And, and you know what oh, people yeah. don't realize yeah. about David Barry is his role in the Jesus movement. Well, he was one of the founders of it. They don't talk about that. Yeah. But he was certainly one of the, uh, at Notre Dame and across the country, not yes. just in Southern California, but all over. He was. Yeah. Of course, those services he held at Melody Land that was really birthing Calvary Chapel. Yes. Because Chuck Smith was there and working with those kids after he went back to New York. Right. And Chuck Smith started working with those. That was really, most people don't know that. Greg Laurie no, they doesn't don't know, know that, that. But that's where the real birthing of wow. Calvary yeah, Chapel was. I'm telling was. you, I've so. preached for years. <laughs> David Wilkerson was a central figure in the yeah. founding of the Jesus yeah. movement. And I, I have no a little company it. doing $600,000 buffing cars and body shops. And... And we moved to Irvine from Calif from uh, Pasadena, okay? Get this. So I talked to a guy at a car show about two years ago. And he said, I understand you knew David Wilkerson. I said, yeah. He said, I sold him a house in Florida. Well, I knew that wasn't true, but I didn't want to bother. He, I said, you did. Tell me about that. He said, well, I sold his house, but he got back to New York. And, he, and, and Dave called me, and he says, I can't buy the house. And I said, well, Brother Wilkerson, it's, it's over in Esco. I, I don't care. I can't buy the house. Why can't you buy the house? This was 1969. Irvine wasn't even a city. Nobody knew about Irvine, California. No, not Irvine. He said, Ranch, God no. told me to move to Irvine, California, and he moved him one block from my house. 
I mean, God put this little guy. I didn't know for <laughs> he nothing. He moved one block from your house. One block first. And the first Sunday when we moved from a Nazarene church into Santa Ana First Sunday, our first Sunday morning in September of 1970. Wow. We walked right into Gwyn Wilkerson. And that, I mean, God put us, you know when you have a hungry heart and you're searching? God, yes. God, yes. I mean, if you're kind of so-so, I mean, you're going to get kind of a so-so response. When you're dead on and you're searching for God, you really want God. Boy, he, you come a long ways, he comes the other way. 40 years with David Gwynn Wilkerson and all the kids. I chair his board now. I still chair his board. Wow. With Gary Wilkerson. You know Gary was a little yes, boy at that I'm time. Sure. And Gary has this wonderful ministry called right. World Challenge. I watched and him grow up. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've, had a, I've had a fun run. It's well, been, and fun. you were saying about how David prayed two hours, three hours a night. Two to three hours every night. He told me he actually had carried on conversations with God. And while he was praying, he's, I can actually ask God questions and he gives me, I, I carry on a car. I was way beyond How me. Else could you you could understand that, but I yeah. can't, I'm not in that league, but yeah, I fell a car wreck. Well, but, yeah. I had a, I had a man on my staff that worked for David Yeah. and he was in New York and he was living underneath David's apartment. Oh. And he right, said right, every right. night at clockwork. Yeah. From three o'clock till five or five whatever, thirty whatever or six, was. Yeah. he could hear him mm. crying mm. out to God. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And, and we would we would right. often get back wow. eleven thirty, twelve o'clock at night, and we would go to bed. But when we would go to bed, we knew he was going to prayer for two or three hours. He never failed. Every when he first got that call to go to New York to help the kids in New York right. City, when he was out in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, country preacher didn't know what he's doing. God led him because he was praying every night. Then he went and he was embarrassed. And he was in the paper. They said, a fool preacher. He goes back home. He apologizes to those people. But then God tells him to do it again. That's right. And he says, okay, I got to go back. And they raised more money for him. Went back and walked right into Nicky Cruz. And, and, and all that happened. When you're, when you, I, I say when you follow the nudge, you live in the fog. You yeah. know what the nudge is. We're, yeah. all, we're all nudged. You're talking to somebody secular. They all have problems, every single one of them, and you get the nudge, you need to pray for them. Oh, but he'd think I'm a fool, and I don't know what to say. We have all these excuses. Oh, I don't have time. You know, my friend just found he has cancer. But what would I say to him? I'd have... But when you follow the nudge, right. you live in the fog. You live in the favor of God. Yes, you do. So just last night, we had a miracle happen to us. I turned to Karen and said, that's that fog thing, man. That works. Yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. It this is. is the way we're supposed to live our lives. Every moment, every day, not once in a while, not on Sunday, every day. It's available to us. He's with us every moment. <laughs> you know, I just love your humility, brother, because you have been used of God in such a mighty way. Well, and I'm going to tell you, uh, while David was alive, people thought his preaching was a little too <laughs> direct, you know, and and now... And, and in fact, he got a lot of criticism yeah. from the, you know, yeah. the evangelical world. Yeah. They had all kinds of things they said against right. him. Yeah. Then he went to heaven and now his videos are going viral all over the world. I had somebody send me last night the vision, 1973. Right. I was there when he preached it. But I had a friend. I didn't know the new you were, you were there there sent, the show. I was there. <laughs> but they sent me the video of... Of, of his that message and Karen and I sat less and sat la listened to that last night said it just brought it all alive of course everything he said then we're experiencing exactly now right. let me tell you something real quick please uh, he becomes a pastor again after all these years because a pastor at Times Square Church so he's preaching every Sunday he got up one Sunday morning he says I have a confession to make he, you know, he was so transparent. Oh, no doubt about I it. I mean, he, if he said something he didn't like last week, he'd say, I have a confession. I was wrong on that. <laughs> he would just say yes. that. So he said, I have a confession to me. I've been preaching one night stands for 30 years, whatever it's been. And I've been preaching the judgment of God. And it is a judgment of God. And we need to understand hell is a real place. He went off and he went off. Right. He said, that's only half the message. As a pastor, when I'm not seeing you once and never again, I'm seeing you week after week. If you're weak in your struggles, understand you can't preach judgment without understanding the grace yeah. of wow. God. And he confessed. He says, I, I am seeing a whole different, and my ministry has been enriched by you. And understand with the grace of God. Thank God for his grace. Mm -hmm. huh? You know, and <laughs> I can talk about him a lot. 
What a lot of people don't realize, I'm looking at the audience right now, and, I'm just, and we're going to come right back to uh, talking about your book because I think that's important. David wrote the most helpful letters you ever will read that gave a saint of God hope in a dying, dark moment. He did. He was, he nobody did. could. You know that. And, yeah. and if you heard him get up and just start talking to the, the, the sheep of God about beloved, he would say, beloved, let me tell you something. <laughs> God has made preparation for you to survive these days. You knew him well. Yes, yeah. exactly right. Uh, Brother George is in prison. The Jim and Tammy thing happened. He was their spokesman. He mocked David for the platform. He had a big church thing of a thousand members or more. And yeah. He read a, a warning that D Brother Dave had, had sent to Jim and Tammy saying, God's going to shut it down unless you wow. change. He mocked him. He ends up in jail. He gets a letter from David. He tells the story. I couldn't open it. I could see the finger of God. I, mean, I couldn't open it. I left that there for a long time. I finally had the nerve to open, open it. He said, Brother Dorch, I love you. You're my brother. And I would do anything for you. And just loved on him. He yeah. just broke down and cried. That's the grace. That's, when you learn that message, was. you give grace. You yeah. have to give grace. Uh, you know, the people that I, the way I, I, I view that is horrible things are going on. They're passing legislation. I don't, it's just crazy. And we can get so mad. Right. The problem is they have an excuse. They're lost. They're lost. And they see evil is good and good is evil. Scales their eyes. The only way they're going to get unlost is if we love on right. them. Yeah. And so we need, to, we need to campaign for all the things of righteousness and, 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 and to correct those things, but not at the sake of their souls. Mm. And we get so caught up in fighting these battles essentially for God right. and doing damage. That, that letter to the church of Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, he says, I know you're doing all this work for me, but you've left your first love. Yep. We have people so caught up in abortion or, or, or the border issue or, or poverty or you name them. They're, they're all important issues. We need, to, we need to be involved. Absolutely, we are obligated to do that. But the problem is, in most cases, when I talk to Christians, that's their life. Right. And they're militant. And they're so upset when they hear the news next week. Another thing was, a, a, you know, going to let abortion come back. And they're wow. so mad. And they're fighting. You know, you've left your first love. We got to make the main thing the main thing again. That's what you yeah, said. Yeah, the first thing, the first thing. You so got to, we yes. got to love people, everybody, even the most, they're lost. But by the grace of God, they're going, why? When yeah. the riots were going on, I, I got so mad at one of the kids. He was standing on top of a police car. It was burning. And the Holy Spirit just came on me. That could be you. What? Hmm. That could be you. And it just hit me. I was born in a Christian home. I was That's given right. all this. I can't understand that. But if I was born like him and, and taught that rage, like a Hamas, they're taught from birth, kill Jews. Yes. But God has their soul in mind. He wants it. So, I mean, we have to look at everybody through God's eyes. We fight the causes, absolutely, uh, as a warrior. But, but, but we don't have that our first love. Our first That's love right. is how do we get as many people into heaven as possible in so the little bit limited time we have left? You know, what, what you're saying, I'm hearing a common theme here, and it's, it's such a no-brainer. It's like Christianity 101, but for some reason we're missing it. Soul winning. You know, the 1%. Why, why are not more people doing it? Altar calls. You know, prayer, a pastor that's yearning in Altar prayer. Calls. What are you know, those? We're talking about David. <laughs> Altar calls. Imagine yeah. if we just did these things. What happened to our altars? Yes. How did it happen? All of a sudden, there's no altars. Why? You can't know. The most precious times for me at Santa Ana First Assembly, after the preaching was done, kneeling down at the altars. Half the church is down there. Weeping. Maybe for two hours yes. afterward, praying and seeing God in the soft music and the Holy Spirit sweeping over you. Precious, we don't even have those. We have there's no place to go for that anymore. You know, I, I got to tell you, uh, somebody needs to deal with another problem that fits right perfectly in this moment. I was in prayer, reading Psalm 91, mm -hmm. and at the end of it, it said, "With long life, I will satisfy him." And brother, as clear as a bell, God said to me, are you satisfied? 
<laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. Why can't I retire? People my age have retired. Yeah. I can't retire. Well, hey, tell I'm me in a about war. it. Yeah, I'm in a war. <laughs> and I really, so God said, are you satisfied? See, if God extends your life, if you're listening right now, if your kids try to get you in a rest home, you're not here to gum applesauce at Leisure World. Come on, man. I'm preaching right now. You need to fold up your walker and beat them off. Stay in your house. Stay in your room. Start moving your legs and your arms. Take a deep breath. You're going to be here a while. But what I want to tell you is that I, I, I saw an interview with Clint Eastwood. And he's 92 years old. Yeah. Directing films. Why not? That's right. And so the guy asked him, how is it that at 92, your mind is still clear, you're still making movies? And what he said was amazing. He said, I don't let the old man in. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See, that's good. we have got to understand that age is just a number. Yeah. And every day that yeah. we're here is a gift. I'm not satisfied yet. <laughs> I'm going to beat up on more devils. I'm going to win more souls. Come on, Mario. I'm going to expand and yes. grow yes. And, yes. and keep yes. pressing in. And if you're out there, I'll tell you, there, there is no reason for depression in old age. Oh, no. There's no reason. No, no, no. From a scriptural standpoint, I actually did a study on things relating to old age. Hmm. And I found, uh, I think it was 13 scriptures that promises health through sinews, all this, uh, the, the, the yeah. extending your life and the bright mind and all that stuff. Um, so I read them and I went to Karen. I said, look at this. There's a reason we're in our 80s and, and feeling like we're in our 50s. And we do. I don't feel any different than yeah. when I was in my 50s. Yeah. And went down and we were doing every single one of them. Not by design. We were just doing them. Yes. Because when you're living for God's purpose, it just ha you just live for God. That's and right. you're doing all those things. That's right. And yes. we're living proof of that. that uh, you know, yeah. our friends are dying. All of if they're not dying, they're they're hovering. <laughs> you know? yeah. And we're going for every year. We, we travel more and do more. It's all ministry. It's all good. More joy, more fun, more joy, more souls. Come on. And, and I think the greatest gift of an extended life is you stop caring what people think about you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. the it's approval like, of man you syndrome. You feel sorry for <laughs> yeah. this generation that is trying to find its identity. And I'm going, you know what? <laughs> I don't. Re and, and it's a weapon, brother. It's a weapon. You know, one time I've said uh, an African missionary can pray powerful prayers. Men of God can pray powerful prayers. But there's one prayer that Satan fears the most. And that's grandma. <laughs> <laughs> the average grandmother oh in a spirit-filled church yeah. that's good. Oh can make the roof tiles come yeah. off of hell. Boy, yeah. I had, especially I had, I had when that. it comes to our grandbabies. I, I had that, yeah. And, and right now, brother, we can't leave because we've got a nation to save. Mm -hmm. And we're running out of time, folks. I, yes. we are. I mean, I, I think it's soon. And what that says to me is, we don't have time to rest. I don't have time to sit on the beach and drink iced tea. I, I will be in the game every day. We have, Tara, Karen, I talked last night, somebody said, when do you take time off? We started, I said, it must have been last fall, Karen. I don't remember taking a day off last fall. I want God, when he returns, I want him to find me in full stride. Come on. Yes. Working on my last person to come into heaven before I, before I go. I just, exactly I just, right. I want to, yeah, want to well, be in the You can't retire from ministry because it's not a career, it's a calling. You know, and so yeah. how are you going to stop, right? And, I, and, I, and why do you stop when you, now I have more knowledge of God, yes. more Bible knowledge, and I'm going to go retire? What is that all about? I mean, yeah. use it. And when yeah. you use it, he blesses you, gives you joy, gives you, you energy. I mean, there's, it's a win-win. <laughs> there's no downside to it. You know, I, I, I was uh, looking at how end-time preaching has got to be careful not to be fatalistic and give the church an impression, well, it's supposed to get bad, it's supposed to get worse, there's nothing we can do about it. And the first, I say this all the time, the first duty of a general is to remove his soldiers from certain annihilation. The reason we know that we can have vision, success, accomplish more, is we're still here. 
That's that's God's yes. endorsement yes. Yes. of vision. Yes. And the darker it gets, I mean, when we have bad news, we're getting closer to the rapture. We're getting yep. closer. We're getting, it's it's coming soon. Yep. We got to yep. run faster. That's right. Yep. You got to run faster. It's not give up. It's not this fatal. It's, a lot of Christians are doing that. Yeah. Oh well, the rapture is going to come. No. <laughs> no. Now, if yep. you have a if you if you have a burden for the lost, right? Ninety percent around That's us it. are lost, and they're going to be lost for eternity. The the scariest part of of of, of hell is it it never ends. That's right. You know, the thoughts, I had a guy, I, three times I tried to, I went and drove 45 minutes to his house trying to get, and he said, I'm too busy today. Oh, you're too busy today. Yeah. I didn't realize what they had put, a, he was in a hospice bed in his living room. He's dying. Okay. But they'd, they'd put a big screen TV on, and he was watching the, the uh, qualifying for the Indy 500. Okay. He said, let's talk about that. Next. Third time he put me off. He said, I'm too busy. I need to see who's going to be on the grid on Sunday. He died a few days later. Do you know he'll know that a billion years from now? Wow. Ever. Your last thoughts, you ha you carry your thoughts on. And, you know, because of a car race, I'm spending eternity because I would not listen to his message about Jesus. Hmm. I mean, it's, 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 it's so obvious. <laughs> we, you know, we need to get on the bench at the end of the game, and, I, and every day every day's an adventure. Yes, but sir. Literally, every you have day. no idea who's next. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, uh, you're almost too young to be on this show. <laughs> not that young. I'm not that young. But I wanted to say one more thing about it, and it is this. If you look at it, I believe, uh, you know, when the rapture comes, I want the devil to be more glad about it than I am. <laughs> Get rid of that guy. You know, exactly. I want to be such... An irritant. Get that guy out of here. <laughs> I, get, yeah, I, want him I don't have to sleep. fight Mario anymore. Get rid of <laughs> Mario's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many of us have loved ones, friends, family that are unsaved? Oh. If you think about it. Yeah. And so even, you know, yeah. all these people are put, getting bunkers and, you know, yeah. just waiting for the Lord to come back, but which was, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for him too. But the thing is, is why don't we occupy until he comes? Yeah. And, 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 and love on them. If nothing saved. else, yeah. love on them. Don't argue love with them. You yes. can't beat them. And relatives are tough. They're really tough. It's easier to a stranger than a relative. But no matter what, no matter what they say, no matter how they mock you, you love them. That's right. You never let your love stop. Just like joy. You never let, yep. let it stop. Love, love prevails. Them. I have one guy who would just... I can't. I it take me an hour to tell you all the bad stuff he did to me, and at the peak of what he was trying to destroy me, and my wife both, and we we raised it. I forgot the next morning we were talking about. There's nothing that allows us to have anger. There's, we got to turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, all that. There's nothing that supports us. So we have when we get to those points, we pray out loud together. Mm. We say, God, we forgive him, and before you, we say, we love him. Uh, years went by. He kept saying, I don't know how you could love me after the crap I've given you, you know. He's now serving the Lord, and I'm mentoring him. Yes. And I could have just beat him up, and he, uh, he deserved it. He was ugly. He, on, on social media now, you can find out what a horrible person wow. I was. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> never let anything stop your no, twitch no. of your joy and never let anything stop your love. Just love on people. Love prevails. Love yes. conquers yes, all. Yes, it does. We can all do that. Yes, We don't does. have to be trained to do that. You know, there's such a strong anointing on this broadcast, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, this is a great conversation. Yeah. I'm, I'm uplifted. You know, a lot of times you leave conversations, you feel heavy laden. You've ignited us today on this set. Oh, the this anointing is... of the Holy Spirit is here. But you know what it is? You come in with such a joy and a peace on you. And you're talking about soul winning, which tomorrow and I, that's like our favorite thing in the world. You know, but we don't hear a lot of people talking about that. How crazy is it? We don't well, hear a lot of people talking about this stuff. And, and it's not something I learned last week. It is, it is, this book is 50 years of learning scripture. Every, every chapter I say, my words mean nothing. I give a little context to the scriptures. But every, script, every chapter here has heavy scripture. Yeah. So, so it's important. the word of God speaking, proclaiming, so cutting, dividing. Yes. And so you get through this book and you're spiritually, scripturally prepared to, to have the time of your life for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's the way I put it. Well, I got, a, I got another one for you, uh, both of you. All right. And then I, it's a powerful thought. Caleb was old and Joshua was young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually most of the problems in life come from people who are middle aged. <laughs> <laughs> because they're the ones that are emotionally holding on to something 
that they don't want to lose. Might be a church, might be a business, might be a reputation. But you get to past that. Yeah. When you're yeah. young, you take risks. Yeah. Because you know, if you're going to succeed, you <laughs> right. have to do it. Right. So Charge here's out. Yeah. everyone, all of middle management mm. said, don't go into the promised land. There are giants. We've done an environmental impact report. <laughs> yeah. We've done a Q and you know a cost and expense yeah, report yeah, sure. and we can't do it the old man said we can do it in fact you see caleb at the end of the his last appearance he asked joshua he said i want mountain country i don't want that easy to plow bottom ground in the valley i want the mountain where the giants are i need a challenge and he said well, i am as strong for war now in my 80s as I was in my 40s, right? But here's the, here's the part that really hits me. We have a weapon of the faithfulness of God yeah. all of our life. Yeah. And so you yeah. talk about a thundering statement. G David said, once I was young, now I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. <laughs> Or their children begging bread, <laughs> and that's why that's what we can say to the young. Yeah, that's absolutely. why David then prayed in Psalm yeah. 72, "Don't let me die. Give me power until I've declared your power mm, yes. to the next generation." Good stuff. Good stuff. So there's yeah. Joshua. There's Caleb. Get away from middle management. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful. I love it. Well, we're in the same wavelength. Got kind of different generations here, but we all we all see the yes. <laughs> what what life's all about. That's right. And it could not be more exciting. These are the most exciting times exciting in the history times. of the world. We were I mean, made think for of this the time. billions of people, no, billions yeah. of people that lived on planet Earth. If I, I often said, if if God talked to me before the Garden of Eden, and He says, "Here, okay, Barry, here's how it all lays out. Where do you want to live? I want to be 80 years old in 2024." with a lifetime of knowledge so I know who you are, so I got gained, so I can go out and represent you. We Come get on, to man. represent Come God on. in these last moments, and we're sitting on the bench. Give me a yeah. break. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Well, both of you have more energy than a lot of millennials. I know I hate to say it, but we got to change this. We got to, yeah, we got to light some fires. So people need to get your book, Barry, and, and ignite their life and get the principles of the Word of God, faith, everything yeah. that yeah. you're talking about here today. I got, I got to tell you, it works. Um, I don't get any money from it, so, but it's a message that church needs to hear, hear today. You get it on Amazon.com or Barnes, Barnes & Noble. Anywhere you get a book, you, you can get it. And then follow up with the Bible study, Ignite Your Life Bible Study. It's digital. It's on our website right now. You can have it. It's free. We give everything away. You on our website, there's no sign-ins. There, there's no opt-ins. There's nothing. You just go right into ministry. We just give it. Everything we give, we just yes. give it away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that book is for the young, too. I want to make a comment, and then I'm going to ask one last question. Yes, yes. You've been so kind to give us this much time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank well, you. I got 13 we, other interviews are waiting I on know, me. I so, you uh, got to go. But I'm not going to give up on Mario Brillo. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but the young need to hear and read this book. Because I really believe that on Gen Z especially, there is this drumbeat of socialism oh, yeah. that you can't do it without the government. You can't buy a house anymore. There's no dream, no invention. Every th good thing is gone. Live in survival. And I really believe that their obsession with TikTok is an escape. Their obsession with video games is an escape mm -hmm. from the drudgery and the yeah. fear of the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the book is interesting because it goes back when I was young, in my 20s, and God gave me a, a challenge to go into the retail market. I was toast. I didn't have any money. I got Turowax and Simonides, all these huge companies, all the money. I have nothing. I have nothing. And, and I just trusted God. And boy, he just brings one mirror. If you trust him, he, he just brings one mirror. I, I could go on and on. We could talk for hours about it. It's just amazing how he does it but the moment that starts happening you realize he's alive and he's he's real and he's personal and he never leaves me and, and then quite frankly i'm invincible i don't mean that from a prideful standpoint he, i could die tomorrow i may i'm 82 years old but i know nothing can happen to me unless god allows it for his glory 
So if I die, something's going to come of it beyond my dying. Mrs. D'Amato, a precious lady, died. Painful cancer. I was so mad. I was so mad. God let her in, in the hospital for two weeks dying of this painful cancer. I went to the funeral. I was so mad until three nurses got up. And all three of them told how they never had anything to do with God until they met Mrs. D'Amato. And they'd never seen such joy mm. in the midst of pain. The one, the one nurse said, I heard her singing hymns. When I, the day she died, I was walking down the hallway. I heard her singing a hymn. And all three nurses came to the Lord. That was good. I would say even Mrs. D'Amato said, that was good. I got three more people. I led three more people to the Lord just before I died. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful. Let me say one more quick yes, thing. Yes, sir. Please. You, you, please. Most faith-sharing experiences are spontaneous. Right? Yes. I mean, they're, they're all around us. So if yeah. you realize that they're spontaneous, they really are. But you're going to have five minutes with them, three right. minutes, whatever. But you, you, you know they have interest. So you say to them, oh, would you like to know more? Sounds like you're, you're really interested in this. You'd like to know more. They always say yes. We have this wonderful card. It's a website. And we give these free of charge. You get oh, them off wow. our website. So, well, this card will tell you how much God loves you and how you want you to spend eternity wow. with him. And they, they'll take the card and say, I can get all that off this card? Yes, that's all that card. So now, like Jack Hidd's bought 50, I printed personally 50,000 of these cards wow. with Calvary Chapel on the back side. Yeah. But, and he's, he's, he's determined, he's, I'm going to have everybody in my 13,000 member church, I, we're going to have every member of our church sharing their faith using these Wonderful. cards. And they're yep. free of charge. So uh, seeking God, uh, go to seekinggod.org. You'll see how we uh, we Amazing. invite people to. We just it's not a it's not a crutch. It's not a you know take this card. Right. right. <laughs> no, it's, it's after you finish getting their attention and and have it taken advantage of as much time as you have with them, and then say before I leave you, I don't want to leave you undefended. Let, let me give you something. So it's an extra little. It's genius. <laughs> it's divine wisdom. You know, my wife Michelle, and we're we're almost done. My wife, Michelle, is a soul winner. And she uses uh, her simple love. We can't go anywhere. Uh, you know, where's my wife? She's over there praying with someone. You know, yeah. if we're shopping, if we're in a restaurant, no matter That's where it. we are. That's right. it. You know, in an airport, in a hotel. I mean, you're never safe <laughs> around my wife. <laughs> The way it because, needs to be. Because uh, of her love for lost souls. You have to be intentional. Otherwise, yeah. you walk right by. God's bringing, he directs Miss their it. steps as well as ours. And then yes. we just blow him off. I think God goes, oy vey. You know, right. <laughs> I just set that out. Where it was, Barry. Thing. That's right. So, yeah, it, it's constant. It's not once a month or once a day. It it's is a all the time. That's right. And when, That's you, right. when you're looking around all the time, we're in full-time ministry. Everything we do and say, think about it. Everything you do and say from the moment you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed, you're in full-time ministry. Everything you do and say is moving people closer or further away from God. Everything. So you can't get away from it. No, you're you already can't. in full-time ministry. The no, question you is, cannot. you have influence. What are you doing with your influence? That's, that's what it is. That's How are you using that? Yeah, you, okay. can, you can preach a good word and tell a good story, but right. and, and do you stiff the waiter? You know, are you indulging in some kind of, is a, is a word coming out of your mouth when you have bad news? I mean, there's all these things that say, out of the, hell, out of the heart, out of the mouth speaks, you know. Right. So, I mean, there's so many ways. We need to be all in. Okay, yes, we just sir. need to be, we just need yes, to be all in. So that everything we do and say, they look at it and say, I, I, want, I want what he has. Amen. Yeah. I want what, yeah, I mean, come on. How could you not want this joy? How could you not want this peace? There's, there's no downside. In, in the world that we're in right yeah. now with all the stuff Can you imagine on. 30 million Christians just loving on people? There's oh, 30 million of us that, that are solid, born again, yeah. believers. If we just started loving on people, stop complaining, just start loving it. If we just start doing that, yes. most Christian, most un, most in church are not Christian because of Christians. Right. That's exactly right. They see Christians, and I, I don't want that. We got to yep. change that. Yep. <laughs> well, I want to look in this camera right now, and I want to tell you something. I have never believed, it's just one minute, I have never believed that anyone ever heard me preach by accident. I don't believe you're no. watching by accident. Right. And I believe right. that you have a choice. Picture yourself at a fork in the road. You're standing right there. You got to go one way, you got to go another way. Mm. And God 
allowed you to have this broadcast come to you to make the right choice. And the right choice is going to lead to life and hope, protection, true safety, sanity, and redemption. The other is destruction. You already know because the seeds of misery are already in you. You know that in five years from now, if you're still alive, what to expect if there's not a change in your direction. But right now, I want you to just pray and ask Jesus Christ to become your Lord. Say, I believe you are the Son of God. I know you rose from the dead. I know that I have sinned and that I need Jesus more than anything. If you'll do that, and then you can get a hold of us, mariomarillo.org. We'll give you material to walk with God. And we want to thank this great man of God for being with us today. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Barry. We really appreciate today's conversation. I think many people will be impacted by what's been said here today. I'll this give you one last, oh, yeah. one last piece. One last piece. You know it, but let me just repeat it. Yes. A hundred years from now, the only thing that will matter for Christians, hundred years from now, the only thing that matters is how many people are in heaven because of our influence. Right, That's exactly. That's the only thing, nothing else. I could help old little ladies across the street. I could help the poor, abortion, whatever the thing. But the bottom line is how many people are in heaven because of my influence, yeah. you know? Paul shouts this message to the Thessalonians, First Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, I think it's verse 19. You remember, he's talking to them. He says, so what's going to be my reward? When I stand before Jesus, what's going to be my reward? It's you. Mm. You're my crown and reward. Those that we bring with us, we influence to come. When we get to heaven, that's going to be our crown. That's going to be our reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you believe that? Hallelujah. And for eternity, not for a moment, not a momentary ceremony. They're, they're in eternity with heaven and God forever Yes. because of our influence. Yes. Come on. <laughs> I think we better leave it right there. Yeah, let's leave it there. Anything else we do would be anticlimactic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching Firepower. We're going to be back next Wednesday. The devil doesn't want us back, but he can't stop us. Thank you, Barry Thank you. McGuire. Praise Thank God. You, Thank you. God bless you all.